So with the work together problem 12.3, you're going to be preparing a payroll register for Judy Hensley and Mike McCoon. A payroll register is simply for the semi-monthly pay period or monthly pay period or weekly period, just an accumulation of all of the earnings and all of the deductions, things taken out of the paycheck. So we're going to do this together here. And the very first section is we're going to we're going to actually prepare this for the peer pay period ended July 15th. So we're going to put down July 15th. Okay. And we're also going to be putting that down for the date of the payment as well. So July 15th. Okay. So next thing we do is we go to each employee. We're going to do this one at a time. So Judy Hensley, she's married and has two allowances. She made $1,040 but earned $39 in overtime. You want to figure out how much she made for the entire pay period. You add both of these up. And when you do that, you get $10.79. All right. Now, we also know that Judy has to have federal income tax taken out of her paycheck. And she's married, which means basically that she's going to need to use this form right here. This is on in your textbook. And if you forget where it's at, it's on page 348. This is for married people. And we want to find out, okay, how much did she actually have to have taken out? So she made 1079. So we try to locate the number 1079 and see what it's in between. Is it at least this number, but less than this number? So as we're going down, we find that it's between 1060, it's at least 1060, but it's less than 1080, which is great. And we know that she has two allowances. So because of that, we're going to go down this column and we're gonna stay in this row and where they come together, she made 48, she has $48 taken out of her paycheck. So we're gonna put $48 down for federal income tax. Now with social security, Okay, you'll notice right here it says that so use the rates 6.2% for Social Security tax and 1.45% for Medicare tax. Now there's one other thing that you need to know. It says that neither employee has reached the tax base. Basically what a tax base is, is it's the maximum amount of money that you, have, you earn and that you can be taxed on. The tax base for Social Security tax and also Medicare tax is $87,000. So once you earn $87,001, you no longer have to pay Social Security tax, which is pretty nice. So that's what's called a tax base. So let's go ahead and figure this out. I'm going to get my calculator out, and I'm going to take 1079, and I'm going to multiply that by 0.062%, and I get 6689. Now, you have this 8 right here. Because this number right here is bigger than 5, you have to round this up to $66.90. So let's do that. All right. Medicare tax, according to the directions, is 1.45%. So we're going to take 1079, and we're going to multiply by 0 0.0145. Once again, you don't have a very clean number. So this number right here is bigger than five, or is five or bigger. So that means that you're gonna round this up to $15.65. So let's round it up to $15.65. All right, now we also know, according to the directions, that each employee is going to have $60 worth of health insurance taken out of their paycheck, and $15 for US savings bonds. So we're gonna take out $60 for health insurance, and we're going to take down $15 for U.S. savings bonds. Now, you'll notice that each section has a section where you total it up. So, for example, right here, earnings, this is for the total amount of earnings, right? You have the deduction section right here. And in the deduction section, you want to add everything up right here to figure out the total number of deductions. 
it just makes it easier because you'll eventually take this number and this number right here, whatever it is, and you're going to subtract them. And that'll give you what is called your net pay. So let's try this. So I'm going to add all of these up with my calculator. And I'm going to get, let's see right here, 205.55. So that's all of them added up. And I'm just going to shift this over. Okay. Now your net pay is your earnings, okay, everything that you made, minus all of the taxes paid. And when you do that, you're going to get 873.45. Okay. Now on this payroll register, there's also this section right here for the check. This is going to come into play a little bit later. All right. Next thing you got to do is you got to figure out right here from Mike McCoon all of his information. So once again, you add this up, okay, and you get 971.75. Okay, the federal income tax, instead of using this form right here for married people, you can't use it. You have to use the other one on page 347 for single people. And when you do, you should get $95. So go and see if you can figure out Social Security tax, Medicare tax, the health insurance is already done for you, and then go ahead and add up the total earnings and then figure out the net pay. So uh, after doing these taxes, here's what I got, okay? Now it's time to figure out the net pay. So just a reminder, you take the total amount of earnings and you subtract it from your total amount of deductions. When you subtract them, that gives you your net pay Remember, net pay is what you have after taxes. So you should get 727.41. All right, so next thing in the directions is right here. It says total all the amounts of the columns of the payroll register and prove the payroll register. So let's check this out. So we're just gonna scroll over and down here at the bottom, we're gonna write the word totals because we want to label what exactly we're doing. And then we're going to add up each column. So we want to know how much regular earnings we have. Okay, when you add all this up, you should get 1960. Okay, you want to add up overtime earnings, which I got $90.75. You want to add up your total earnings. So you get 2050, 75. You want to add up your federal income tax? I got $143. For Social Security, I added both of these up and I got $127.15. For Medicare tax, I got $29.74. Health insurance, I got $120. I got $30 here for other. And I got $449.89 for your total. And then your net pay is um, 1686 So one of the big things is proving whether this works or not. You're going to take this number right here, okay, and let me just put it in here. And you're going to subtract it from your total deductions. And you want to see if these numbers equal. Okay, so 1686 and 1686, they equal one another. So you're good. They, you've proved that they are fine. All right, last part is right here. It says, prepare a quarterly earnings record for Mrs. Hensley for the quarter ended September 30th. Now, what we do is we prepare quarterly earnings records for each employee. It looks just like this. And we're keeping track of how much they earned throughout the quarter because we need to send this information to the IRS. So right here, each quarter, remember, is every three months. This three-month time period ends September 30th. Now, the person that we're working with right here, according to the directions, is Judy Hensley. Okay. So we're going to put Judy's name down here. And uh, her middle initial, she doesn't have one, 
but she is married and she has two allowances. So we're going to put down married and we're going to put down two allowances. We also know that Mrs. Hensley has a pay rate of $13. Here's her social security number and she's a sales clerk. That information is going to be really, really important right up here. So we're going to put sales clerk and we're going to put down her social security number and we're going to put down her rate of pay, which is $13. Now, what you'll do is you're going to take this information right here from Judy Hensley, this entire line's worth of information, and basically you're just going to plug it in. That's all we're doing right now. So we're going to go down here. We're going to write down the uh, date, okay, which was July 15th. That was the pay period. And then you're basically taking all of these earnings and putting them. So we're literally just getting all of these different things and just plugging them in right here, okay? Now you have this accumulated earnings. Okay, the other... So accumulated earnings is how much she has earned up to this point in the year. This is pre-tax. So this is, this is pretty much the gross pay, so the amount that she has earned before taxes, because this is really important for the tax base. If you remember, we were talking about a tax base earlier. Um, neither employee has reached the tax base. This number is the number that they use to determine whether to tax or not tax. So it's very important that you keep track of that. So what you'll do is you'll go to the actual register itself, and you'll write, or the earnings record, sorry, and you're going to write down $13,520. Now the next part is you want to add in, not the net pay, that's before taxes. So you will not use this amount. No. You will actually use right here, this is the gross pay amount. You're going to add this and this together. So add both of them together to get your new accumulated earnings number. So when we add 1,079 plus 13,520, we should get $14,599, and that would be correct. All right, so once again, just, just so that you are aware of the terminology for the next uh, section, you'll be completing the on your own. This is a payroll register. A payroll register lists all of your employees' earnings for a pay period okay so that's the first one the second thing that you should know is that an earnings record okay an earnings record lists all of the pay periods for a quarter for one employee right here for Judy Hensley so it's just one employee the other thing that you should be aware of is that down here the accumulated earnings you want to make sure that you remember that the accumulated earnings right here is the total amount of earnings and it is before taxes are taken out, which refers to gross pay. To figure out your new accumulated earnings, you pretty much take your accumulated earnings, your, your gross pay for the pay period, plus your accumulated earnings in order to get your new number. When you add another line, you would use this number to help you figure out the new accumulated earnings.